Hopkins. I'm super excited to be joining you this evening. Um, not only am I here to uh, kick things off with this, uh, to jump into another delicious recipe, but I have our in-house uh, resident chef, Jennifer Armstrong Hicks, joining me as well. And summer is in the air. So we're going to be jumping into a really delicious summer recipe that I think we're all going to love. Um, Jennifer, first and foremost, how are you? How is everything going? I'm great. Thank you. Um, I'm also excited that summer is right around the corner and I'm particularly excited for strawberries. Um, so it's Perfect that we were able to um, find a great work of art to kind of pair this dessert with um, from the Newark collection. It's amazing. Who knew <laughs> that strawberries were in season there too? <laughs> I love it. Like, you know, it's spring and every, everything's in bloom. So um, being that everything's in bloom is the perfect, uh, I guess, season for strawberries. Uh, that, what's that old saying? April showers bring May flowers. In this case, I guess, May berries. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> we, we're going to be uh, using strawberries tonight. And I, from what I understand, um, not only are we using strawberries, but your recipe was inspired by a work that incorporates strawberries from the museum collection. So I don't want to hold us up. I want to just jump right into it. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Well, um, so I can talk about the work of art first and we can have a look at that. Um, the piece is called Large Berries, um, mm -hmm. which is what we'll be using later. <laughs> but it's by an artist named Marjorie Strider who uh, was a really um, kind of pioneering female a pop artist, and um, she did some really amazing work, much of which actually popped off of the wall or off of the surface that um, it was on. So you can see in this piece that the strawberries actually physically come off of the wall, which is really fabulous. I love, um, I just love that. They look, you know, big and juicy and ripe and like summer strawberries or early um, spring in our case uh, strawberries. Um, her work uh, is fantastic. This was uh, from 1977, um, which is cool. She's done lots of fruits and vegetables and then she also um, used some humor and subversion in her work and um, did some other things that uh, were inspired by pieces in gentlemen's magazines um, from that era. So <laughs> Uh, when you look her up, you'll see a lots of interesting um, kind of funny takes on, um, you know, what you might have seen in one of those magazines. But I love this piece. I just think it's so, um, it's just bold and, you know, the scale is great and it's so, um, it's just fun. I mean, they look like real strawberries. Um, I just love that. So, yeah, so we were inspired to make something with some fresh strawberries. And I actually went out to um, a farm, a local farm called Buckwheat Farm um, here where I live um, that grows strawberries that you can go pick. So um, I have a bunch of just picked fresh today strawberries to use for our vanilla bean honey panna cotta with strawberry spoon sweet. And yep, there's me um, in my mask out at the farm. Um, this morning, you can see the rose behind me, and then you can see all those beautiful little berries hanging down, um, ready to pick. And then here's some more. Those are the actual berries that we're cutting up right now. Wow. And yeah, it was really fun to get out there. My family and I go every year and we pick some, and we usually make jam or strawberry shortcake, which I also love. Um, but this panna cotta seems really perfect. It's so easy but it, it seems really fancy. So I think that's kind of a fun thing to make, like something that seems very elegant, but is super duper easy to make. So if you're ready, we'll jump into it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm already, my mouth is already watering. So let's, let's <laughs> get into it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the strawberries smell amazing. I mean, they just like fill the house immediately. Yeah. And when we start to cook them for the spoon sweet, it's even like, more fragrant. It's awesome because you've got like vanilla and orange and the strawberry together. So it's really good. I love so what we're going to do, we're going to start with um, the gelatin. So a panna cotta is essentially a type of, it's kind of like a custard. It's very creamy, but it does not have any eggs in it. So um, it's a really great choice um, when you don't want to have something eggy. Like some people 
Some people love creme brulee or um, flan, and this is this has a similar tech, right? I like all these things, so you know, I, I, <laughs> you just line them up for me. Um, but this one, this one has a similar texture to those, but um, it is set with gelatin instead of eggs. So the very first thing that we're going to do is actually bloom the gelatin. It's called blooming it. And so we're just using dried, um, like powdered gelatin. And we start with a couple of tablespoons of water. So that's what I've got here. I'm just going to put it in a bowl. And you do this kind of separate from the part that you heat up. Um, and it's, it's because of this blooming process. And what it does is it allows the um, gelatin to kind of absorb some of this water so that when you mix it into a hot liquid, it dissolves really quickly. If it's the dry powder, it's kind of like it wants to clump up. So this is an important step you don't want to miss. But it's also super duper easy. If you've ever made jello, it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, it's really not far from that. So even I won't mess it up. I, lo I love you that. You seriously <laughs> cannot mess it up. It's amazing. Um, so um, I added a little bit of Grand Marnier, which again, like this is like fragrance central right here. Um, and then you just want to like kind of carefully sprinkle the gelatin on the top of it. And you can see how I'm sort of moving back and forth. And that's because I don't want it to clump up too much in any one area. I want it to kind of cover the surface. And I'm going to mix it in too, but uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. And you can tell right away it starts to really absorb that liquid. And I'm going to get it a little bit closer so you can see. It gets kind of weird at first, but you have to give it, I don't know, about five minutes or so just to kind of absorb that. So right now it looks like this. In a few minutes, it'll be a little bit, it'll seem thicker. Yeah, it already looks jelly-like. It looks, yeah, I, I'm looking at yeah. It, it looks jelly-like, yeah. Exactly. So we're going to just kind of flip that aside. And then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and measure out the milk and cream, which is really the main part um, of the um, custard. So I'm just going to measure out a couple of cups, two cups of whole milk. And the cool thing about this recipe too, you can use, you don't have to use um, dairy. You can use almond milk or coconut milk is really, really good at this. Um, coconut cream, you can, um, yeah, you can try oat milk would work. Um, so really you don't have to use um, any cow's milk if you don't want to. Um, and it changes the nature of, you know, the flavor, but they're all really good. I actually made one of these not long ago with um, some creme fraiche. Uh, that's really good. And I've made one where part of it is buttermilk. And it sounds a little weird, but it's cool because it gives you that tartness. So depending on what you're putting with it, it can yeah. that can be a really good choice too. Okay. So the next thing that we're gonna put in here is some sugar. And so that is what I have here. Let me make sure this is the right sugar. <laughs> My half a cup. You don't <laughs> want to put the wrong amount in. I'm just gonna measure it really quick just in case. This is a quarter cup measure, so I'm gonna do two of those. Uh, now I do yep, have a question. Was... Now, I do have a question. Uh, question for you, uh, Jennifer. Um, yeah. You were saying using uh, milk substitutes like uh, almond milk or uh, coconut milk. I'm imagining you would want to use not the pre-sweetened or the sweetened uh, versions of those things, but the unsweet. Correct? Since you are having. Yeah, I mean, you could. You certainly could use a sweetened version and just adjust. Um, you know, adjust the amount. But um, yeah, if you were keeping the same recipe, you probably would want to um, maybe use the unsweetened ones if you can. Okay. Um, a lot of them aren't too, too sweet and it would probably, it would probably be okay. You might just wanna leave like a tablespoon of sugar out or something. So I am measuring out a little bit of honey right now. This is um, some, again, local wildflower honey. Um, I got this from my, garden center that I go to and they have all these, they sell hives, but then they also um, have a bunch just like out around the garden center. And it's awesome to see what they're doing. You gotta get those pollinators um, taken care of so they can produce, <laughs> make more pretty flowers. Um, and then 
I am using, so in my recipe, I have a vanilla bean um, that really does like an actual vanilla bean, really adds a lot, but they're hard to find. Uh, so we, you can just use vanilla extract, but I am actually using a, here I'll put it on this one so you can see a little bit better. Uh, yeah, I see. Vanilla bean That's, paste. Okay. And so it just comes in a little jar. And what it is, is it's the seeds from the vanilla bean pod. And then it's just in this kind of vanilla gel. Um, so you can see, I'm gonna get just a thin amount. So you can see the little bitty seed. Oh yeah. You it's kind of like um, honey when you get it before it's been like cleaned all up. Where, where yeah, exactly. And it's got those little bitty black seeds that you're looking for when something is called vanilla bean, you know, something. Now does so that make it more flavorful? Case. What's up? Now, does that make it more flavorful? Um, it does, with, yeah. I think the, um, I just think that the vanilla beans themselves, they lend a more, I think it's a little bit, I, I like to think of it as kind of a floral <laughs> note <laughs> to it. It's sort of a hard one to describe. I mean, they do come from flowers, obviously, but um, it just, I don't know. It's, um, it seems a little bit more intense and a little bit more obvious because I think sometimes vanilla can sort of, you know it's there, but it doesn't seem like a prominent specific flavor. It's just kind of like neutral. Yeah. But with this, I feel like it gives you more, um, mm. a little bit more. Um, so I am going to move a couple things out of the way while that is heating up on the stove. Okay. And it doesn't need to come to a boil. It just needs to get kind of, you know, a little scalding, a little hot, um, a little steamy, but it doesn't have to get completely, um, doesn't have to boil. So we're gonna try and keep a close eye on that. Um, and then I'm gonna cut up some of these gorgeous strawberries. I mean, they are like, what's so great about picking them or you know, going to a farm is that they're like deep red inside. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get grocery store ones that are a little white or you know, a little light pink, and um, it's just not quite the same. It's not, it's not the same. Like I, I you know, I we've had this discussion before, my family's southern, and so I have family in Talladega and um Talladega Alabama to be exact and so like yeah. when, I go, when I eat food there they have their own farm so like oh. everything tastes better like they made us regular burgers and their burgers because they butcher the you know animals on their farm themselves was 10 times like everything was their sausage was taste it just it's a different flavor when you have it fresh um and that includes the fruits and vegetables so i i totally totally agree with you i'm not sure what happens from grocery store to farm to grocery store but it's not the it's same because they have to pick it so so long before it gets to you you know yeah. it takes so long to get there that they have to pick it because these will be funky like in uh, two days maximum not you, got i you. mean they just they won't last really beyond you know, a couple of days. That's why, like, you get them and you either, you know, can them, you turn them into some kind of, you know, jam or something like that, or you cut them up and put them on a, um, you know, on a, a shortcake or, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, puree them or freeze them. I mean, honestly, if you take berries like this and you, yeah. you know, you just cut the ends off and you freeze them, that is so much better in a, like, a smoothie or something later oh. than you know, getting them from the store. And that's, that's what a lot of times the, the better frozen fruits um, are, they're called IQF, um, individual quick frozen. Yeah. And that means that they take the ripest stuff and they freeze it like immediately. Okay. So that's what would be good about these too. Okay. And you can always, um, if you decide you want to do that, like you have a whole bunch of them and you don't know what to do with them, you can just um, cut the ends off, stick them on a cheap pan or something and um, in one layer, yeah. and then you can put them in the freezer and then they set and then you just stick them in a um, Ziploc bag or something later. That way they don't stick to each other. Uh -huh. um, all right, so I'm gonna get this going too. I don't know if you can see these, oh, they're just like jewels. They're so yeah, they're red. like, is that, so that's all the berries diced up? Oh, uh, yes. So mm -hmm. that's what we have here. And I'm going to scrape a little bit of orange dust that I've already dusted off of a fresh orange into there. And that, again, that just adds like a little bit more dimension to this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna juice a fresh orange and this is probably gonna flip everywhere because it's for a slightly, this 
the future is really for women, it's not for RNG. <laughs> Oh, we're, we're making it work. We're making it work. <laughs> Can't have four different juicers in the house. Um, <laughs> and this one here. I love the whole nature of like pop art and how like they just take something simple and you know, like a simple shape or something and just blow it out of proportion in some bizarre way. It's like the whole soup can, you know, the Warhol soup can. Let me just take something that's ubiquitous and, you know, make it, you know, something that is prized and um, kind of extreme. So that is our juice and the orange. And I'm going to grab a little cinnamon really quick, which is actually not in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and my secret spice layer. Um, <laughs> so just a little bit of cinnamon. You could use a cinnamon stick too if you don't want to do um, brown cinnamon. And then let's see, we need a little bit more sugar for this. Mm. This one gets a whole cup of sugar, which seems like a lot. But but berries are typically tart, so I, I'm I'm here for the sugar. I know for me, some people like love eating just fresh strawberries, and I'm like mm -hmm. I'm not a fresh strawberry fan unless it's like <laughs> blended in a cake or a pie. Because yep, me is just a little too tart. I'd That's rather have. I'm the exact same way. Like I love them, but like I have to have yogurt or I have to have you know some sugar or something to cut it because it just kind of makes my face go like this. Like they just. Two, some when they're too tart, they're too tart. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. <laughs> so this is going to go on the stove. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and turn up. So I turn that up a little bit on the higher side. Um, okay. And that's just to get it kind of boiling off the bat. And then once it's, once it's boiling, we're going to turn it down to a simmer and let it go. Um, and it looks like our, let's see how long it is. This one, you might want to give it a stir every now and then. Okay. And it's starting to get there. I see a little steam coming off of that. So we're going to wait just a second. And I think that um, one of the things that you'll want to do too is find the right containers to put these in. Um, what I chose are some um, stemless wine glasses. Here they are. Uh, yeah, yeah. Something like this works. Um, you could also put it in like a, you know, crystal parfait glass. You could put it in a jar. Um, mm -hmm. You know, mason jars are like one of the most kind of common things that people use now to put little um, yeah. little custards and desserts in. So any of those would work perfectly fine. And I always these in particular are pretty big and they hold a lot. So I'm gonna only fill it up a little bit of the way, okay. and then put just a little stripe of this strawberry on top. But um, for some things, you could fill them up higher. So this one, it's it's a it has a kind of a wide base, so we keep it a little bit lower. And one other thing I wanted to mention about the strawberry spoon sweet is that it's kind of a hybrid between a compote and a jam, essentially. So and you can kind of treat it either way. Um, it doesn't have any pectin or anything added, so it's not going to it's not going to gel and really get super duper thick the way a jam would. Yeah. Um, I keep looking back because I don't want that to boil over. If anybody yeah. saw our last one, you know that boiling over is a thing <laughs> that can happen. So I'm like, <laughs> it's hyper <science>. aware <laughs> this time. Um, but the, um, the what was I talking about? You'll have to remind me now. Well, we left off on uh discussing the the compote and the consistency of the two of the basic right. the compote and the slight, I guess, light layer of jam that you're gonna put. Well, it's not mm -hmm. jam, it's the a berry mix that you're gonna put on top. So exactly. So what's really great about this is you can I mean you can use it for lots of different things, but um I'm gonna go ahead and get it off. Uh, what you can do is you can leave it kind of chunky the way, you know, with the pieces in it, the way we have it, or you can um, puree it. You could put it in um, a blender 
or I just used a um, immersion blender. It's actually an attachment that you can add onto my little hand mixer, mm -hmm. um, but it's really easy to then just do it like in the pot that it's in. So I did some earlier and I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you. So I made some earlier and you know, it's kind of, it's thick, but it is, um, yeah, but it's still good. fluid. Yeah. You know, it's not like jam where it's kind of, um, you know, chunky. It makes so me anyway, like this is I like like the sort of finished here. I'll do it in the here too. It's, oh my gosh, it's just like ruby red. It's so, so, so pretty. Um, all right. So now we've got this gelatin. You can see, look at it now. It's actually like absorbed all of that liquid all together and it's kind of chunky again. But um, this is perfect. So we're going to leave it just like that and grab our cream mixture. And we're just going to add a little bit in and kind of stir it around. And it's going to melt this gelatin back down. It's funny because you, you hydrate it and then you melt it again. <laughs> <laughs> it likes steps. So it'll only take a second. I'm going to set this back down on the stove. And the strawberries are already starting to bubble. So this one, it doesn't take long. You just really do want to make sure that all those little kind of bits are dissolved. And they almost are. These are glass bowls, so I can sort of check underneath and make sure. And then we're just going to add that back to the remaining cream. Okay. And we'll mix that. And then that is your mixture. That's it. That mm -hmm. is the whole panna cotta part. So. There's really not anything to it. It's it's super duper easy. So it's great if you if you have glasses that you're not too concerned about. Um, you know, if they're kind of heavyweight, then you could pour it in when it's on the warm side. But it's not a bad idea to wait for it to cool a little bit. Yeah. Um, just kind of not even room temperature, but just a little. So I like to put it. I like to put it in something that actually has a spout because otherwise it gets really messy. I would imagine. So I'm just going <laughs> to pour it into my glass here. Hopefully you can see that. And then at this point, you put that in the refrigerator. Okay. And you can fill all your glasses. Something that uh, people do sometimes with a panna cotta that's really fun is to set something fairly narrow, like maybe a quarter of an inch or something, a little piece of something like a ruler or something like that, like my microplane grater here would be a good choice. Something like this that's not very thick, but that's long. And you can set your glass like just tipped up on the edge and it'll actually slant the mixture. You know, it'll, it'll be, you know, sitting in there kind of cockeyed. Yeah. But if you let it refrigerate like that, it'll stay there. So it gives you like a little angle and then you can fill like on the side of the angle. So it's, you can do some really crazy stuff with gelatin and, and um, yeah. you can consider. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop these in the fridge and okay. I'll take out the one that's set. You can see. Through the magic of television. <laughs> the magic of television. Here's one that is completely done and one that we will pop. And the strawberries are simmering. I'm going to actually take you over to see the strawberries. Can you see that yet? Yes. Right there. Don't want to fall in the strawberries. So that's right. how we get the uh, mixture, right? The strawberry mixture that you just showed us. It comes from you exactly. keeping it and boiling it down. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. And so at first it looks like this, like it starts to cook down a little bit and the strawberries, it's, it's very liquidy. It's, um, you know, it seems pretty thin, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take too long before, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes or so 
before it's actually, um, you can see that the bubbles start to get a little glossier. They get a little bigger. Um, when the bubbles start to get bigger, that usually means that it's thickening and that the, um, a lot of the water that was there is gone. Okay. So, or, you know, the, the, the water in the fluids that you had in it from the berries and from the um, juice. So then it's almost just all sugar. So you like kind of replace, that's sort of what a compote is. It's almost like you're, rep you're shifting the, the water sugar balance to be more sugar in it. So that's what we're doing. And we let that kind of simmer for a while until it's done. And then you get this gorgeous um, stuff. I did, like I said, I did um, puree this one, but you don't have to. Um, it's good either way. And this is so good on pancakes or waffles or yogurt, um, ice cream. You can use it on a zillion different things. So I am going to, I'll hold one of these and show you. You just spoon a couple of, couple of spoons on top. And this, um, panna cotta it's a it's a really delicate um kind of creamy thing you don't want to jostle it around too much because um but it's better when it doesn't have too much gel in it because you know it could get kind of rubbery if you're not careful yeah so um the less you the less gel you use the better but then it also makes it a little bit you know a little delicate to deal with but ultimately you end up with something about like that. So you've got this like nice little stripe of sweet on top of there. It's more than you'd think too. It's probably <laughs> two or three tablespoons. And there's one that's totally set. And uh, you could garnish the top of that or you could just do it simply like that. I love them kind of, you know, they're kind of modern and edgy when you do it this way. So you would definitely look very fancy if you um, presented one like that. I'm going to move this back. You can see this is getting a little bit thicker now, maybe. Can you see that on the camera? Oh, yes. I see. Yeah, it looks really, really thicker than how it started. And you practically don't see any uh, of the berries um, in the traditional heart sense that they were when they entered the pot. <laughs> yeah, they start to become um, very transparent or translucent and they get really deep, deep red um, in there. I'm going to move that so that this doesn't steam up too, too much. <laughs> <laughs> then you can just see the lovely berries. But that's it. And panna cotta is um, super simple. You can do it in lots of different ways. Um, you can add other flavors. You could swap out the honey if you, you know, have an aversion to or an allergy to honey. Um, you could use maple syrup instead. Uh, you could use um, brown sugar or molasses. You could even make one that's kind of more of a spiced version of that that would be amazing. Um, you could add lemon zest to it and go kind of a more lemony citrus um, direction. Yeah. So it's a really fun uh, but simple dessert. I, I like it. I like how it uh, works for, you know, the cookout, the family summer cookout. Or maybe you're going on a family picnic or maybe a date. I mean, I'm saying family, but, you know, it's a lot of singles, a lot of us singles out here. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, you might want to, you know, uh, mix things up. And um, because I know everybody's still being very cautious because of the pandemic, you know, outside picnics may become all the rage this summer um, as totally. we get going back out into society. Um, so I, I thank you for this, Jennifer. The, the dish looks wonderful. Um, it looks bright, colorful, and it looks like it tastes amazing. I almost am like, I, I kind of want you to taste it on camera. I so think I, I should. Kinda, I, I, <laughs> so I could kind of like will. live vicariously through you really quickly. Like, yes. Oh, yeah. So you <sighs> so can I'm see, foodie, it's so very just, lovely. Yeah, that looks great. It's really good. <laughs> I'll just get one more. Um, yeah, as my well. kids, like as soon as they realize that I'm in here now eating this, they're going to be like standing like right off camera going like. <laughs> OMG, I'm, I'm so envious. Like I said, I'm going to have to make a trip. So uh, when I come to see my, my family in Virginia, I might have to dip down a little further and come to the Carolinas. Yeah, please do. Yeah, because I have food, serious food envy on my on well, where I'm at right now. I would be delighted to cook for you. So definitely do that.
That's a win. That's a win. Well, I thank you for joining us. Um, and I thank our audience for joining us this, tonight as well. Um, I would like to encourage you all to make sure you check out our website, www.newarkmuseumart.org, for more information about cool shows like this. And not only that, I also want to encourage you to support the artist projects at the Newark Museum of Art through our annual fund. So with that, visit uh, newarkmuseumart.org backslash annual fund. And also, again, just to reiterate, our website has all of our cool programming there. You can also follow us on social media at Newark Museum Art on IG. And we also have our Facebook and Periscope and Twitter pages as well. Uh, and we would also look forward to anyone who may want to donate. Um, I know a lot of contributors out there who want to contribute to the arts um, and this is your opportunity so if you would love to donate to have more cool programming like this come to you in your homes um, you can click the link or i should say uh follow the link newarkmuseumart.org backslash donate and um you know you'll be able to keep the newark museum of art alive along with all of its cool programming and if you would like to learn more or find out how you can get involved please feel free to contact michelle Soli saliola she is the director of individual giving and membership um her email is also currently on the screen and again jen thank you so 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 much for joining us tonight this was amazing i my mouth is watering i'm gonna have to all i have sweet in my house is gummy bears so i'm just gonna have to like <laughs> Munch from gummy bear because it's summertime, so I've been trying to get rid of all the uh, things that might tempt me to keep me yeah. not being beach ready. However, <laughs> um, <laughs> I can however, relate. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot harder here uh, with having all these things um, close by. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, a little bit of this, you know, goes a long way. So maybe you can treat yourself. Uh, you know, I'm I'm all about a treat. So, and when I go on vacation, I'm going to treat myself. So you might yes. see me do a pop up, and uh, I'll just eat on my gummy bears for the night. But again, thank you all Hi. for joining us. This is Art Bites. You can find all of our old episodes on our YouTube page. Until next time, bye. Thank you. <laughs>